Hello, yes. Having had a year to fully appreciate multiple playthroughs, I think it's time I did a ranking video for the bad guys of Baldur's Gate 3. So here we go. Warning, spoilers will abound. Oh, and I'm not covering Larico, and I just don't see him as that evil. Sorry, Night Song fans. At 32, Geringoth Thorm. The cousin, niece, mum of Ketherick Thorn just wants to collect her money from passing groups of adventurers. She's not so much evil as greedy. And if that's the mark of a villain, then can we really cast the first stone? At 31, Thizabold Thorn. Ketherick's ginormous son just wants to have a drink with his zombie pals and swap stories of Derek do with random people that wander into his pub. In fact, if you make him drink so much that he explodes, well then you're no better than an enabler. At number 30, Fist Marcus. Marcus was so happy to get his pretty wings from Ketherick, he simply had to kidnap Isabel for him. He is guilty of nothing more than doing his job. Well, his new job, I don't think the Flaming Fist will have him back now. He's probably well past his second written warning. At 29, Car Niss. Faerun's very own Spider-Man might look and sound creepy, but he doesn't really do much actual evil. He just wants to guide the faithful to his new god. At 28, Draw Ragslin. Head Hobgoblin Honcho and hobbyist necromancer Draw here looks mean and scary at all, but he mostly just babbles mystical mumbo-jumbo and pokes a dead squid man a bit. At 27, Priestess Gut. Despite sounding like a foul old tramp loitering outside of Weatherspoons, Gut enjoys pride of place as the goblin's spiritual leader and conduit of the absolute. She still doesn't do much more than try to brand you though, which is a shame. At 26, Disciple Zarel. Now, religious fanatics are ten a penny in Baldur's Gate 3, and Zarel isn't even the worst of them. Aside from letting you kill some goblins, yeah, that'll be a new experience, she doesn't really accomplish much in the way of evil acts herself. At 25, True Soul Nair. Dwarf choking gnome botherer Nair has a big ranty villain's voice, but aside from the aforementioned acts, he's pretty piss poor at the whole bad guy thing, what with getting himself trapped by rubble, and if you don't kill him, turned into a zombie by a much better villain later on. At 24, Karga. Karga starts out well enough in the villain stakes. She has her pet Snek kill a child, and even tries to turn the whole grove over to some evil hobos. But then she can be persuaded to repent her wicked ways and join the good guys. And for that reason, she's getting a much lower ranking than she could have gotten. At 23, Glut. Now, a giant evil mushroom might sound scary, but he doesn't do much except try to persuade passing adventurers to join his coup against the other, slightly less evil mushroom people. At 22, Yergir. Big, red, and dumb as a box of house bricks, Yergir is stewing away in the gauntlet of Shah when we meet him, having had a hit put out on him by Raphael. He can be rather easily talked into killing not only his gang of bodyguards, but also his pet kitty, and even himself. Too stupid to live. At 21, Walburn Bongle. Everybody singing. Perhaps the most hated character in Baldur's Gate 3, though personally I found Barkus annoying as fuck, so I wasn't really fussed about Walburn either way. He wanted to genocide the Gondians for working for Gortash, even though they were pretty much forced into it. Aside from that, pretty unremarkable as villains go. At 20, Shah. Sort of an evil goddess. Most notable act in the game is trying to make Shadowheart kill her parents, who the player met about five minutes ago. So not the most impactful event. At 19, Balthazar. Now we're getting into the real villain hours. Balthazar is a rotting lich type fellow with a nice line in necromancy and keeping his family members in jars. He radiates evilness and would make a fine cartoon villain. At 18, Malus Thorm. A pretty horrifying addition to the Thorm family and that's saying something. When we meet Malus, he's in the process of teaching his minions how to perform surgery on a fully awake patient. Due to his hubris though, he's able to be talked into his own demise. At 17, Ketherick Thorm, the least evil of the big three villains of the story, but still pretty unforgivable in terms of acts committed. 
Ketherick turned from the light and became an evil overlord, even bringing back his dead daughter in order to infect her with a tadpole, not to mention raising an evil army to march on Baldur's Gate. Frequently shows regret though, and he's such a miserable bastard it's hard to fully respect him as a bad guy. At 16, he who was. A weird kinky elf that gets off on being possessed by guilty souls when you torture them. There's probably a subreddit for that. At 15, Viconia de Vere. Viconia was basically the Lazelle of the original Baldur's Gate games, in terms of personality and actions, but for some reason they decided to bring her back as a moustache twirling villain in Baldur's Gate 3. Fair enough, I suppose. At 14, Minthara. Posh evil totty, Minthara can be somewhat redeemed, but she enjoys death and mayhem just a tad too much not to be included here. And if you're doing an evil playthrough, well then she's in her element. At 13, Raphael. Let the backlash begin. Now hear me out. Yes, he's got a nice line in devilish charm, and he sings his own fight music, but gushing fangirls aside, what does he really do to lift himself above the other scenery chewing villains in the game? Kidnaps Hope? Mm, big wow. Tempts who is already a prolific child criminal into signing away her soul? Nah. Sorry, Raphael just isn't up there with the big dogs. At 12, Mizora. Much in the same way as Raphael, Mizora is the perfect femme fatale, but that's really all she is. The extent of her evil is giving Will a fetching pair of horns and being mean to his dad a bit. She even gets herself captured by mere mortals and you have to rescue her. At 11, the Emperor. Old Squidhead, or Balder, the rogue so roguish they named a city after him, starts out pretending to be your dream girl slash boy before turning nasty when you rebuff his intentions. Sounds like your standard nice guy .tm to me. At 10, Mystic Carrion. A mummified lich necromancer surely deserves a spot in the top 10. He gets up to and tries to make you get up to some truly despicable things. At number 9, Gortash. A thoroughly charming chap if you ignore the blackmail, kidnap, extortion, genocidal aspirations, dark god worship, and annoyingly clashing outfit. Not to mention he sold fan favourite Karlak into slavery. At number 8, Auntie Ethel. A lovely old lady who just wants to feed you up like a fantasy version of Mrs Doyle from Father Ted. You won't have a cup. Ah, uh, no thanks Mrs Doyle, honestly, I won't have a cup. Are you sure now it's hot? Also a demonic hag who literally eats babies, and that isn't even the worst part of that. At number 7, Sleritus Fell. Should you play the Dark Urge Origin, and I highly recommend that you do, you'll be given your own little avatar of Baal as a personal butler. And good lord is he supportive of your endeavours. At number 6, Cazador Zar. Seemingly another smarmy posh villain in the vein of Raphael and Gortash, the difference being he can back his shit up and has a body count in the probably tens of thousands. At number 5, Saravok and Chev. The original big bad of Baldur's Gate 1 is looking a tad old and tired now, but he can still get down with the young pretenders, facilitating blood rituals and lots and lots of murders. At number 4, Valketh. Maybe she's lying about being a god and is just an overpowered lich queen with some high level spells, but she's sure as hell terrifying and wants to kill who is essentially the gith Yankee Jesus. Despicable. At number 3, Merkel, the god of death, has probably killed millions, directly or indirectly, has the best lines in the game in my opinion. And before we get into the top 2, remember these are just my own opinions. Don't break your keyboards or phone screens now. At number 2, the Absolute. The overall big bad of the game. A giant monstrous demon brain that can think 10 moves ahead of you before you've even gotten out of your bedroll. Responsible for everything bad that happens to you in the game. And at number 1... Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick-wet carrion. Now some may not agree. And maybe I'm just a little bit in love, but my god does Orin enjoy what she does. An unrepentant, sadistic murderer who takes sheer delight in all the nasty things she does. They don't make them like this much anymore. Hidden depths? She's as shallow as a puddle of still warm blood. In terms of pure villainy, Orin is my absolute ho-ho number one. Thank you so much for watching. Come back soon now.